Right. Now, with all the legal and political fallout from the Solyndra bankruptcy, it's important to note that there are solar success stories across the U.S. So this week, we'll show you some of the unexpected places where solar energy is breaking through those dark clouds. We start in the Midwest with Energy Now's Patty Kim looking at ways that technology is benefiting humans and animals, too, in this Energy Now Spotlight. These days, one of the star attractions at the Cincinnati Zoo is not what you might expect. It's a sea of solar panels, over 6,000 of them, spanning an area the size of nearly four football fields, installed over the zoo's parking lot. It's one of the largest public displays of solar in the country, making the Cincinnati Zoo one of America's greenest. Oh, that's a, that's a wet tongue there. <laughs> With over a million visitors coming to the zoo every year, and maybe a few more these days, thanks to a new baby giraffe. This here's Daddy, by the way, this is Kemba. Folks here at the Cincinnati Zoo are hoping that the new solar panel display will create a bit of monkey see, monkey do. The idea of having 1.3 million people a year park under this array, and then when they come up on this bridge, come in the zoo, and they're like, wow, what, what is that? We can say, hey, we did it, and if you can do it in Cincinnati, Ohio, don't tell me you can't do it wherever you're at. The panels are designed to produce one and a half megawatts of electricity. That's about 20% of the zoo's total energy needs. And when you've got a yearly electric bill of more than half a million dollars, every sunny day adds up. The good news is everybody's getting some. So the manatee filtration systems, the polar bears to gorillas and elephant houses. I mean, on a day like today, right now, every single building in our zoo is off the grid. That means a sun-drenched day like today is good for the bottom line, when the zoo's not drawing any power from the utility company, not a single kilowatt. When I got my first energy bill, I started reading down it and it was zero. It's like, wow, it's really actually working. Like, this is real. To build this $11 million project, the zoo didn't invest a nickel. Instead, the zoo simply pays a locked-in rate of about 10 cents per kilowatt hour to the solar panel owners, roughly the same price it would have paid the power company. The advantage comes over time. As utility prices go up, the zoo could save millions of dollars. The project's financing was a complex web, weaving an assortment of federal tax credits along with Ohio's own alternative energy incentives. But perhaps most importantly, it took the vision of one local businessman. So we're generating an excess of power, which explains why we're you know, in the green mode here. This is the future. This is the future. Steve Malink is head of Malink Corporation, the Ohio firm that designed, owns, and operates the zoo's solar array. You know, we've had the industrial age, we've had the space age, internet age, but it's very possible that we will not lead the coming energy age. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be led by China or Germany or Japan. Malink wasn't always on energy's cutting edge. He originally built his success in the home heating and ventilation business. 3.8 kilowatts. But one trip to a green building conference in Cleveland changed everything. I cannot imagine us going back to where we were. I, I think that renewable energy will continue to grow. And more companies are hearing the call. In New Jersey, a Toys R Us is laying claim to one of the largest rooftop solar arrays on a single rooftop, outdoing a Macy's warehouse in Arizona. And in Maryland, Purdue Chicken is powering up with solar, joining Whole Foods and Staples. Now, the sun's rays are reaching beyond big business. Out west, one woman is leading the charge. Any fantasy building that you'd love to actually see solar panels on one day? Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal. That would that would be a good, that would be a good one. <laughs> Lynn Jurich is the co-founder of Sunrun, a company that leases solar panels to homeowners. It's like leasing a car. You pay little to nothing up front, and the company takes care of the rest, installing, maintaining, and selling you electricity at a locked-in rate for 20 years. We know for consumers to adopt solar um, in the mainstream, it can't be hard and it can't be more expensive. 
making renewables affordable and um, mass produced is what our generation needs to accomplish. And so far for Sunrun, so good. It's now one of the largest providers of residential solar power in the nation and has already reached 11,000 homeowners. They hope to double that next year. Solar power service! Woo! But the success hasn't come without huge risk. Jurich had to convince investors to inject millions into an uncharted solar universe. No small feat, given solar is still in fewer than 1% of homes in all of America. I think we wouldn't be human if that didn't make us a little nervous. I mean, we're inventing this, this new industry. Um, you know, it is a little bit of the Wild West out there. Um, but that's entrepreneurship. No, no, don't be a gentleman, Ted. I, I climb ladders <laughs> like this all the time. I'm sorry. One homeowner who sees the light is Ted Leeser of Mill Valley, California. He paneled his roof as a hedge against rising power rates, a choice, Ted says, in the long run that could help him save thousands of dollars. But money isn't the only factor. How could I say no? It's a minimal amount of cash out of pocket, panels are on my roof, I'm cutting my emissions down, I'm being a good global citizen, I'm being a good role model for my kids. It was like, how could you not do this? Change, it seems, is on the horizon. We can say that this project, literally this project, has a direct relationship to motivating other folks. Uh, that would be pretty cool. In Cincinnati, Ohio, Patty Kim, Energy Now.